begin our celebration this morning by blessing ourselves in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning everybody. And just before I get into the formal uh, welcoming of everybody here, uh, this is Mary, Mary McNally, our uh, parish secretary and sacristan. And so we're just going to uh, place two Christian symbols on Rose's coffin this morning. And in life, Rose cherished the gospel of Jesus Christ. And may Christ now greet her with these words of eternal life. Come, blessed of my Father. In baptism, Rose received the sign of the cross. And may she now share in Christ's victory over sin and death. And the crucifix and the Bible will remain here now for the duration of our Mass today. I want to take this um, opportunity uh, to welcome Patsy, Patrick, or Paddy, whatever people call you, Patrick, Alan, Barry and David, Karen, Nora May and Sinead, Connor, Grace, James, Katie, Laura and Leah, and of course, Rose's brothers, Brian and John, extended family, relatives and friends. And I noticed quite a number of neighbours standing out this morning as well uh, before uh, Rose uh, left her beautiful home. Uh, some of you are visitors. You've travelled a distance to be here today to be with the family and to support them. So welcome to you. This is a Holy Family Church in Balls Grove. Uh, Derek is my name. I'm the local priest here. And... Uh, you're very welcome, and I know the family appreciate your attendance here uh, this morning. Um, so the two Christian symbols, the Bible and the crucifix, we're now going to uh, join uh, these symbols with some other personal symbols that have been chosen by uh, the family. I'm just going to ask Laura, Leah, Grace and Kate. There's a, a table down there about halfway back down that aisle. So um, the, the symbols of Rose's life, we will bring them forward now and there's some beautiful symbols uh, chosen. And I suppose in many ways, um, symbols are designed um, to, I suppose, um, maybe bring back some memories and some favorite memories we might have uh, of Rose. Um, but like the Christian symbols here, they act as a guide, helping us to pray and to reflect here today. So Laura is uh, the first forward, and Laura is going to bring forward uh, the garden symbols of the fork, the trowel, and, and the gloves. So thank you, Laura, 
as you bring these forward, a reminder of Rose's love of the great outdoors and of her beautiful uh, garden. Leah uh, brings forward uh, the wedding photograph, uh, the wedding photo taken on the 1st of August 1967, a beautiful photograph uh, of herself and Patsy. Grace brings forward uh, the wonderful makeup bag, which I'm told was well used. And uh, we're not going to open it because I have two sisters and a mother and you never open a lady's makeup bag, I'm told. So it remains here uh, closed with all of her uh, instruments, as they say. And then Kate, last but not least, uh, brings forward uh, a book. Um, Rose had this wonderful love of, of reading. But it's very interesting that the book we bring forward here today is actually a medical book because um, she loved reading books on, on uh, all things medical and uh, so that's reflected here today in that symbol. So as you can see, uh, I think we're ready uh, now uh, with these symbols and with ourselves gathered here today uh, to support one another. Um, Rose's passing was sudden and has taken everybody by surprise, especially family, uh, neighbours and friends. And so uh, there's, there's great sadness here today, uh, there's pain, and the reason we gather as a community is to support one another, but in particular, I think, to support uh, Patsy and Alan, Barry and David and, and the family here today. So we acknowledge God's love and God's mercy and compassion for us on this day as we pray together. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, Almighty Father, our faith professes that your Son died and rose again, and mercifully grant that through this mystery your servant rose, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may rejoice to rise again through him, and we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And just before we get into the readings of our Mass, I just want to acknowledge uh, the, the cameras that are in the church relaying uh, this Mass to uh, family members uh, throughout the country. In particular, just to say uh, good morning to all those tuned in uh, down in Kerry and in Athlone. And I'm sure there are other places besides. So. Uh, welcome to you. You're very much part of our celebration here today. David and Grace are now going to lead us in our first reading and our second reading. And Mary will lead us in our psalm. A reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. A time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to uproot, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to tear down, a time to build, a time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to mourn, a time to dance, a time to scatter stones, a time to gather them, a time to embrace and a time to refrain, a time to search and a time to give up. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear, a time to mend. A time to be silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time to war and a time for peace. This is the word of the Lord.
A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. We know that when the tent we live in on earth is folded up, there is a house built by God for us, an everlasting home not made of human hands in the heavens. We are always full of confidence then, when we remember to live in the body means to be exiled from the Lord. Go on as we do by faith and not by sight. We are full of confidence, I say, and actually want to be exiled from the body and make our home with the Lord, whether we are living in the body or exiled from it, we are intent on pleasing him. For all the truth, the truth about us will be brought out in the law court of Christ, and each of us will get what he deserves for the things he did in the body, good or bad. The word of the Lord. I invite you all to please stand for our gospel acclamation. Thank you very much. with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. And Jesus said to his disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God still and trust in me. There are many rooms in my father's house. and If there were not, I should have told you. I'm going now to prepare a place for you. And after I have gone and prepared you a place, I shall return to take you with me so that where I am, you may be too. You know the way to the place where I am going. And Thomas said, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So please be seated now just for uh, a few moments. <coughs> <clears throat> and so um, I just want to issue a, a warm welcome to you all again in case you've just tuned in online uh, or in case you've just come in uh, welcome to you to Holy Family Parish and Holy Family Church and uh, as I say um, we're, we're here to do two things today we're here to support one another and we're here to celebrate Rose's life and so um, for the next few moments I'm just going to read um, an account um, that the family have written and I think it's beautiful and uh, there's a lot of detail in it and uh, as I was reading through it this morning I think Rose's personality uh, shines through uh, very clearly. So um, the following written by um, the family. Uh, Rosemary was born on the 13th of May 1947 in Bellustown, uh, daughter to Patrick and Helena Bellew and had two brothers Brian and John. Uh, Rosemary went to school in Bellustown and went to work down the road in Mount Hanover in Matthew's estate. Rosemary went on to meet the love of her life, of course, and they married on the 1st of August 1967 with the beautiful photograph resting here on the table here in the front. Significance of 1967, of course, is that Patsy captained the St. Pat's Stavullen team to the Fesh Cup. Am I right, Patsy? And, uh, of course, loud people won't like me saying this, but Meath won the All-Ireland that year as well. So, so two, uh, two, wonderful, um, two wonderful events in 1967. Um, of course, you were blessed with three uh, beautiful uh, boys, David, Alan and Barry, and uh, I've had the pleasure of getting to know them, three gentlemen, and uh, delighted to got to know them over the past few days and she was very proud of her boys and um, they gave her six loving uh, grandchildren. Uh, she adored and cherished her grandchildren right up to the very end. Connor, James, Grace, Leah, Katie and Laura. Three daughters-in-law, Karen, Nora May and Sinead and she loved them all. Rosemary was very fashion conscious, loved to dress up uh, any occasion, even if it was to go to the local corner shop. 
She loved her garden, of course, and her, her beautiful gloves and her implements are here uh, at the sanctuary. Uh, she spent hours in her garden. It was either potting plants, cutting grass, spending time uh, watching the world go by. It was her pride and joy, always in full bloom like herself. And it has been known for her to be seen on her hands and knees around the rose bed trimming the edges with the scissors. Uh, such was the pride she took in her garden. So she loved the outdoors and she was uh, never one uh, to stay indoors by all accounts. A very active person and very well known around the town as she walked to most places. Even up to the time uh, she fell ill, uh, she was just back from her weekly uh, visit around the race course in Bellustown, where herself and Patsy would always uh, do the circuits of, of the race course, and she did three circuits last, uh, last week. And some might say she was actually uh, checking out the ground conditions of the track for the upcoming meetings that were taking place there in Bellustown. Uh, Pat and Rose, they were inseparable, going everywhere together as best friends do. Uh, they loved their long weekends away and their sun holidays. And in fact, um, they're just back from uh, some time in Westport recently. Um, Rose always had a love for a day out, and this included getting dressed up, uh, going for a day out at horse racing. Uh, horse racing was in Rose's family going back to the, the 1900s. Her grandfather, Patrick Bellew, wrote his first winner in Bellustown in 1910. So isn't it a wonder then that she would uh, go to that place, that sacred place, Bellustown, for her walk time and time again. Deep, steeped in tradition and steeped uh, in, her, in her own family. There were many a special occasion over the years on the track um, the biggest thrill in 2003, uh, when their own horse won both a major handicap hurdle in Leopardstown and then went on to achieve horse racing uh, victory in Cheltenham. So something, um, something special about those moments. Rose, um, and this, these are the final uh, couple of lines from, from the family, uh, Rose was always a, a picture of health right up to her very, very sudden uh, passing. And even then, uh, she posed with elegance until her final breath. And this is a phrase um, the family have taken from uh, the Bible. As the Lord said, death comes like a thief in the night. And how true this statement is. Rose's life, uh, as you know, and the sense I get is her life was marked by uh, devotion to, to friends, to family, my sense is um, to neighbours as well, given um, how you turned out this morning and your visits to the home yesterday evening and this morning. You will all carry uh, great memories of her. I think um, there's sadness here today. There's also an element of uh, joy because there will be a new arrival coming into the family in about seven weeks' time. And uh, what's lovely about that is that I know the new arrival and I know the next generation of children into this family, you're going to be told about Rose. And that's a fact. They're going to be told about her elegance, her style and her love. And we give thanks uh, for Rose's life today very hard to use the word celebrate at a funeral mass, but that's what we're here to do, to celebrate the love she showed and the life she lived. We here in Holy Family, um, we offer our condolences to, to you, Patsy, and Alan, and Barry, and David, and to Karen, and to Nora May, and to Sinead, and to the grandchildren, and to brothers Brian and John and extended family, neighbours and friends. The symbols that rest here today, whether they're rose symbols or the symbols of our faith, they point us to the heavenly kingdom, where Rose is now at rest with the company of the saints, with her parents, Patrick and Helena, and they all now rest in the loving embrace of Jesus Christ. And that's our prayer today, as we fix our eyes to heaven. And we ask this through Christ 
our Lord. Amen. And now we just very gently uh, lead into the prayers of the faithful. And so I think we have five, five prayers today. And Kate, Caitlin, Laura, Grace and Leah, will you come forward now and lead us in these uh, beautiful prayers. God our Father, today we profess our faith in you. And now listen to our prayers as we offer them in faith, in hope and in love. We pray for Rosemary who has died. May God now welcome her into his heavenly home of eternal happiness and peace. Lord, hear us. We pray for all those whose lives are dedicated to caring for the sick. And in particular, we pray for the doctors, nurses, and all the staff of the ICU department of Our Lady of Lords Hospital who looked after Rose with great care until the end. May God reward their goodness and kindness. Lord, hear us. We pray for all those who have died, especially the relatives and friends of Rose who have gone before her. Parents Patrick and Helena Bellew, may God unite them all in the happiness and peace of his heavenly home. Lord, hear us. We pray for the relatives and friends of Rosemary, especially her husband Pat, her sons Alan, Barry and David, her brothers John and Brian and members of her extended family, all our neighbours and very close friends. May God fill these hearts with his comfort and consolation. Lord, hear us. As we pray that Rosemary will find eternal peace, we pray that the peace that is in heaven will touch the troubled parts of the world our country, our parish, and our, our homes and our hearts. Lord, hear us. We present our prayers through Our Lady's intercession as we pray together. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And we now move into the offertory of our Mass. And James and Connor, you're going to bring forward the gifts of bread and wine, which are on the table here in the aisle. And uh, Mary, I think you're leading us in an offertory hymn.
pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant Rose, we beseech your mercy that she who did not doubt your son to be a loving saviour may find in him a merciful judge. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For as one alone he accepted death so that we all might escape from dying, as one man he chose to die so that in your sight we all might live forever. And so in company with the choirs of angels we praise you, with joy we proclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. And at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. In song, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. And remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Tom, our Bishop, all the clergy, and all God's people. Remember your servant, Rosemary, whom you have called from this world to yourself, and grant that she who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and we remember in this very special way Rosemary's parents, Patrick and Helena, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, forever and ever. Amen. So I invite you to please stand, if that's okay. And at the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. We extend our peace to everybody watching in at home, especially in Athlone and down in Kerry, as we offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. And may the body and the blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen.
very aware of the amazing work that's done in the ICU uh, department of um, Drogheda Hospital and 
they have given the family a reflection, uh, a prayer, and Laura is going to read that uh, here now. Thinking of you, you are missed so dearly, now you are no longer here. When I'm thinking of you, sometimes I shed a tear. I will always treasure you, you were so gentle and so kind. Your love lo lives on within my heart, with memories of you in my mind. Life goes on from day to day, but something is out of place. I would give um, almost anything to once more see your smiling face. You were such a blessing, so thoughtful and so true. I feel eternally grateful to have known someone like you. And to add to that, the family would like to uh, thank you all for being here today. Uh, the support you have offered, the kind words you have shared, uh, the friendly handshakes, um, all of those things mean uh, so much on a day like today. Um, and on a number of occasions over the past few days, it has been mentioned, um, the, the care, uh, attention, the love um, that Rose received in the hospital, in ICU, and uh, just to, uh, in a very special way, uh, say thank you uh, to everybody there, but also we continue to pray for the staff that work there and pray for patients who are there in ICU on this day. As we know, bless Rose Coffin, and we also incense as a sign of our deep reverence and respect for her and for her life. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our sister. May our farewell express our affection for her. May it ease our sadness, strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet her again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. I invite you all to please stand for these prayers. And the response, receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. 
May Christ, who called you, take you to himself. May angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Receive her soul, and her to God the Most High. Saints of God, come to her aid. Hasten to meet her, angels of the Lord. Receive her soul, and present her to God the Most High. Eternal rest, grant unto her, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. Receive her soul, and present her to God the Most High. To you, O Lord, we commend the soul of Rose, your servant. In the sight of this world, she is now dead. In your sight, may she live forever. Forgive whatever sin she committed through human weakness. In your goodness, grant her everlasting peace. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In peace now, let us take our sister to her place of rest. <laughs> 